Welcome to Little Makers. I'm Elizabeth Zunon and I'm an illustrator. I love to draw, I love to paint, I love to color, um, and I'm going to share some art and a story with you today. I'd like to thank the University of Denver Graduate School of Professional Psychology for hosting me and also the University Libraries. Now, I've always loved to draw in color, and as an illustrator, I get to um, draw in color the stories that authors write in books. So this is the book that I'm going to be reading today. It's called Bedtime for Sweet Creatures. It is written by Miss Nikki Grimes, and it is illustrated by Elizabeth Zunon. That's me. All right, here we go. No, no, no! You beat the word like a drum. The minute I say, come sweet creature, it's bedtime. Your eyes swell wide as owls. Let's go, I say. Woo, woo. You ask as if you didn't know. Bear is going, I say. He'll be awfully lonely without you. Suddenly, you come running. In the forest of your room, you cling to Bear. I turn back the sheets and you growl. In you both go, I say. You coil beneath the quilt, silent as a snake. Why are you hiding? I ask. Monsters, you hiss. All gone, I trumpet. You're safe. You toss your mane and roar. Order me to check beneath the bed. I kneel on the forest floor. Find something wild and ferocious. Meow. Your bookshelf is noisy with stories. Which one? I ask. You point, frozen like a fawn, until you hear, once upon a time, you yawn, and grind your teeth like a squirrel, ready to nibble the night. I'm not sleepy, you tell me. I smile and tuck you in tight. A koala, you hang on to me for one last kiss. I love you, mommy. I love you more. Okay, lights out, I say. Fearless tiger, you crouch, just in case, ready to pounce on goblins in the dark. Later, you bound out of bed, sly wolf on the hunt for water. Hurry, I whisper from the kitchen door. Last glass. You lope back to bed before Bear can miss you. Bathroom, you say out loud and hop up once again. Good night, I call. Silence falls over the house. Dad and I slip into our bed, half asleep. We hear one small toddler whisper, I sigh and pull back the blanket. Come on, I say, and in crawl, owl, bear, snake, kitty, fawn, squirrel, koala, lion, tiger, wolf. A 
and one very sleepy little child. The end. Now there's a lot of animals in this book. Um, I'd love to know what kind of animal is your favorite. Maybe your favorite animal is in this book. Maybe your favorite animal is not in the book. I'd love to know. Um, my favorite animal is actually the lion. And I am gonna show you how I make a lion mask. Now, for your mask, you're gonna need a couple of supplies. You're gonna need some paper. I have some paper right here. You're gonna need mm, some scissors. You're gonna need a hole punch or a pencil. You're gonna need markers or you can also use crayons. You're also going to need some string. And if you want, you can use one of the templates that we've got. We've got the lion for the lion mask, or we've got the owl for the owl mask. Now, since I think lion is my favorite in this book, I am going to draw my lion mask. Um, I'm going to make my lion pink. Pink is one of my favorite colors. I wonder what favorite colors some of our, our little makers have. I'm going to use, mm -mm -mm, I'm going to use blue, a blue marker to draw my lion. First thing is I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the nose. I always start with the nose, whether I'm drawing an animal or whether I'm drawing a person. So for my lion nose, my lion nose kind of looks like a heart right in the middle of the page. Next, next thing I do is the lion's mouth. The top of his mouth, I draw two little smile lines. And then I'm gonna draw his chin. I'm gonna give his chin some hair. He's got some hair on the bottom of his chin. Next thing, I'm gonna draw his head. I'm gonna draw kind of like a big loop. Kind of looks like um, a light bulb shape for his head. Next, I'm gonna draw the eyes. Now, remember the eyes, we're gonna cut them out later. So I'm just gonna draw the outside of the eye shape. And I'm not gonna bother to draw any circle inside or any dots inside, because we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna cut out the eye shape so that we can put our mask in front of our face and actually see out of the eyes. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is the ears of my lion. And lion ears are basically like triangles. Here's a little triangle on one side. It's kind of like a rounded triangle. Triangle on one side, triangle on the other side. And then I'm gonna draw another little triangle inside the big ones. There's a triangle inside the big triangle. And another one. Okay, now my lion has eyes, nose, a mouth, a chin. He's got ears. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give him a big, beautiful mane. Now lions have a lot of puffy, beautiful hair surrounding their face, right? So I'm going to draw some lines around my lion's head to show his big, puffy, beautiful hair. Ooh, 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 he probably uses conditioner. He's got a lot of poofy hair. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw um, some whiskers on my lion. I'm gonna draw three little dots right below his nose. One, two, three. And then I'm gonna draw three more right here. One, two, three. 
nice little whisker holes there. And then the last thing I'm gonna draw with my marker is the holes for my hole punch. I'm gonna draw a circle right in the side of his mane. I'm gonna punch that out with my hole punch or my pencil later. I'm gonna draw another circle and color it in right here. So after we punch these holes, these circle holes, we're gonna use our string to attach our mask to our face. Okay, so I've got my lion outline with marker. Now I'm gonna use some other colors. I'm gonna use red and I'm gonna start coloring my lion. I'm gonna color my lion's nose, his little heart nose. I'm gonna color that red because my lion is full of love. So he's got a big, beautiful, bright red nose. And then if you'll see in the book, every animal has different patterns on their body. So the lion has triangles and kind of these rainbow shapes and these leaf shapes. The fawn has polka dots. The koala has triangles inside of big triangles. And the squirrel and the wolf also have different kinds of triangles. So I'm gonna draw some patterns on my lion mask. I'm gonna use purple, purple marker, and I'm gonna draw some zigzags all around the face of my lion in his mane. I love drawing zigzags. I love drawing triangles. Triangles and hearts are my favorite shapes. See my zigzag shape around his face? Now I'm going to draw mm -mm -mm, some triangles. I'm gonna draw some triangles inside my zigzag shapes here. There's a triangle, purple triangle. Another purple triangle. Now you can draw anything you like. You can color with your crayons. You can write words. If you remember, a lion makes a very special sound, which we call a roar. You could draw your lion with his mouth open. Maybe your lion is roaring or growling. I'm gonna continue to color, draw and color my triangles around my lion's face. Okay, what next? Um, what can I add to my lion? Um, mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna use a green crayon and I'm gonna color in my lion's ears. I'm gonna make them green. I've never seen a lion with green ears in real life, but I can use my imagination and make my lion however I want him to be. <laughs> if I ever saw a, a pink lion in real life, I would be really surprised. But I think it would make me really happy. All right, my lion's ears are green because I like green. Now I'm gonna do some more coloring, maybe with orange. Um, I'm going to draw a couple of circles around my lion's face. Let's see. I'm going to draw an orange circle, kind of like a polka dot. My lion's mane is decorated with triangles, zigzags, and polka dots. Ooh. I see that Hazel loves owls. Who else loves owls? I love owls. I don't think I've ever seen an owl. Mm, I've seen a lot of owls on TV. I don't know if I've ever seen an owl in my backyard. Has anyone out there ever seen an owl in their backyard? That would be really exciting. I have a lot of skunks and groundhogs in my backyard. I never tried, I never tried to draw a skunk or a groundhog before, but maybe some other time I'll draw that. Okay, uh, I'm gonna give my line a couple more orange polka dots because why not? Mm, 
couple more, a couple more. The top of his forehead. He's a very special lion. There we go. Okay, now it is time to cut out your mask shape. So after you're finished coloring and drawing, um, you can add whatever other things you like. You can add words, you can add sounds. If you have glitter, you can add glitter to your, your mask. If you have stickers, you can add stickers to your mask. Um, I'm gonna take my scissors and um, maybe some of the big makers can help the little makers cut out the shape of their mask. I'm gonna take my scissors and it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just gonna cut around the shape of my animal. You can follow the lines that you drew or you can just draw and color or cut an outline. It doesn't have to follow all of the lines that you drew. We're almost there. I think it fits my face pretty well. I'm going to take my hole punch and this circle that I colored in before, I'm going to use my hole punch and punch out that circle. Now, if you don't have a hole punch, you can just use a pencil and very carefully poke your pencil through right in that circle right there. So now we have two holes that we can attach our string. But first we're gonna cut out the eyes. Um, we're gonna use our pencil or the hole punch again. We're gonna make a little hole in the middle of the eye. And then another hole in the middle of the other eye. And you can start to see, if you put it in front of your face, take your scissors and cut the rest of your eye shape out. You can cut a, a circle shape or a diamond shape, whatever shape you want your eye holes to be. But remember, you're gonna have to be able to see out of these eye holes. I can see pretty well out of this eye hole. Okay, one eye is done. Other eyes being cut out. And sometimes I think it's easier when you're using scissors to move your paper to cut your shape instead of trying to move your scissors around in a circle shape. Okay, my eyes are cut out. My holes are cut out from my string. The next step is you grab your string. Oop, my string fell on the floor. Let me grab it over here. Now I found some pink and white and gold string in my studio. And to find the measurement of how long you should cut your string, you can take your string and wrap it around the back of your head and hold it to your forehead, just like if I was taking a measurement of my head to make a hat, I think I would take this measurement right here from the back of my head to my forehead. I'm gonna cut right here. And then we have one long piece of string. We're gonna fold this long piece of string in half and we're gonna cut it at the halfway point so that we have two smaller pieces of string. So one long piece becomes two pieces. <clears throat> I'm gonna take the first piece in one hand. I'm gonna grab my mask in the other hand, put my string through the hole that I punched with the hole punch or this the pencil, and I'm gonna tie a knot. All right, we have one string attached to our mask. We're gonna take our 
other piece of string, put it through the hole that we punched with the pencil or the hole punch. I'm gonna pull it through and tie a knot. And there, our animal mask is all done. Now, if you wanted to put on a show or act out a story, put on your animal mask and you can tie it behind your head. Um, sometimes when I'm reading a story, I like to act out everything that happens, act out um, what the lion does and what the koala does and what the little child does. So this could be fun to do if you wanted to act out the story. And of course, these are not um, medical masks. These are just masks for fun for using our imagination. So if we're gonna go somewhere where there's a lot of people, we're gonna put a fabric mask on and then maybe we can put our, our, our animal mask on if you wanna have fun. Um, I love using my imagination to draw and I love to draw real things like animals, but I also love to make them super creative by making them pink with orange polka dots and purple triangles and zigzag shapes and a red heart nose. So I think it's really great when we can use our imagination to make art, but we can also use our creativity to look at the things around us to make our art, to inspire our art. So. Let's see, I'd love to um, see if anybody has any more questions about animals or animal masks or this book, Bedtime for Sweet Creatures. The author of this book is Nikki Grimes. She lives in California. I live in New York. Um, we've met a couple of times, but sometimes we talk on email um, but she's a very talented writer and she's working on some more books just like this. Um, and I'm really inspired to be able to make illustrations that have people, but also have animals. Um, a lot of my other books have people characters. And this is the first book that has a lot of different animals that I had to learn how to draw. I wasn't really comfortable drawing animals before but I looked at a lot of pictures of animals um, from zoos and from magazines and from books so that I could learn how to draw a lion, how to draw a fawn, a koala, a squirrel, a wolf, an owl. I don't think I had ever drawn these kinds of animals before. So I had a lot of fun learning how to draw these animals and now I have a lot of fun reading this book and making more creative animals with my construction paper and my crayons and my markers to make animal masks. So I think that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining me, Little Makers. Maybe I'll stick around and see um, if there's any more questions. Thank you for participating. Thanks for the fun activity. Um, thanks for, for reading with me and making art with me. I always love sharing my art. And I always love when people use their creativity to make something that they like too. I didn't show you the back of the book. The back of the book has some more animals. If I open up the book, you can see all the animals at once. So we have owl, we have wolf, we have squirrel, we have koala, we have fawn, we have lion, and here we have bear, and we have tiger. Let's see, what animal that's in the book is not on the cover, you know what? The snake, the snake is in the book, but he didn't make it onto the cover. Um, 
I had a lot of fun making the cover for this book. I took a big sheet of blue paper and then I had all my different animal shapes. I had a purple piece of paper where I drew my tiger, a green piece of paper where I drew my bear, and so on and so on. I cut out all of my animal shapes and I had fun putting them on my blue nighttime sky paper to try to see how the animals were going to walk, follow the child into the bedroom at bedtime. So I spent a lot of time making these characters and I feel like they kind of become like my friends. These aren't real characters and these aren't real animals from real life, but I spent so much time thinking about them and drawing them and figuring out what they were gonna look like and what kind of patterns each one was gonna have. I feel like all of these animals, these imaginary animals are like my friends, my imaginary friends. Um, a lot of people, a lot of kids have imaginary friends, which is super awesome. So I kind of made my imaginary friends come to life by putting them in this book, on the pages of this book. All right, let's see if there's any other questions. Well, I think we are done for today. Thanks again for joining me. And um, I hope you find a nice bedtime story that you can read if you don't find this one. And see you later. Have a good evening. <laughs>